Hey, how's it going? It's Super Twonky here with some more Fallout 4 gameplay. And today I wanted to show you the testing I did for my survival permadeath run. And the purpose of this testing was to make sure I could survive a mini nuke um, by level 26 is what I put it at. And the reason is one of the biggest parts of a permadeath run uh, one of the biggest kind of milestones in the run is when you can unlock Ballistic Weave because that gives you a huge defensive uh, bonus for the rest of the game. The problem can sometimes be the quests it takes before you can unlock the Ballistic Weave. In particular, the... Uh, um, what's the mission called? The railroad mission Mercer Safe House that Pam gives you to claim the settlement for the railroad. One of the settlements she can send you to is Outpost Zamonja, and at Outpost Zamonja there's an enemy named Boomer who carries a fat man. And if you happen to get assigned Outpost Zamonja on a permadeath run, that can uh, spell, you know, disaster. That could mean the end of your run if he happens to land a mini nuke. If you don't build your character to be able to survive. And so what I wanted to do is see if I could design my character so that if the worst case scenario happens and I get assigned to outpost Zamonja, I could guarantee surviving a direct hit from a mini nuke. Because I didn't want to get that far in the game and then just have the run potentially be over. And fortunately, the you can. You can 100% survive a mini nuke by level 26. And the reason I chose level 26 is because of Adamantium Skeleton. Level 26 is when you can unlock rank 3 of that, which means limb damage is completely eliminated. One of the reasons why explosive weapons like the Sprain Prey are so good is that they deal area of effect damage to the enemies, uh, which hits all of their limbs. So, taking the reverse of that, if we can eliminate all limb damage done to us, it means it's going to make explosives less deadly to us. That means when we get hit by a missile launcher or a mini nuke, we're not get we don't there's no chance of us instantly dying because one of our limbs is getting blown off. Um, if one of your limbs gets blown off, it's your your character's dead. So we make sure that that can't happen with Adamantium Skeleton. The other uh, perks we have are three points in Life Giver and two points in Lone Wanderer, which is extremely important that 25% less damage is huge. And I have Endurance maxed out. I have my Endurance at a natural 11 on this character because I did the trick with the special book in Sanctuary. Um, getting over encumbered reduces your Endurance and then that can allow you to put your special point into that. So to make up for that, because I didn't want that to be a requirement here, I'm using the bowler hat, which only gives a bonus of one endurance instead of the sea captain's hat, which would give you two. Normally you would want to use the sea captain's hat because two is better than one. Um, the other thing that I'm not taking purposefully is rooted because I want to show that you can use this method for a non-melee character. And most gun-based builds, you're not going to go, like, super high into strength. Just because it's not very useful. And so, on on my permadeath character, yeah, I did take rooted. And you'll get, like, 50% or plus 50 damage resistance while standing still. Which is a kind of a big deal. Um, for my, my specific run that just made this even... You know, it just made it even more safe to be able to tank mini nukes. So the rest of the gear, we're using the Black Ops chest piece, which is probably one of the best chest pieces you can buy. It's from Deb in Bunker Hill. It normally comes with the Dense mod, which greatly reduces damage from explosions. But we actually replaced it with the Padded mod instead. And the reason why we're doing that, even though Padded is less effective than Dense, if you have two pieces of armor with dents, they don't stack. Um, you don't get any benefit from running two pieces of armor with the dents mod. And the padded mod can only be put on a chest piece. So we're putting padded on the Black Ops chest piece, and then we put dents on the champion left arm. 
This is just a metal arm piece you can buy from uh, Lucas Miller, who's one of the traveling merchants. Metal limb pieces allow you to put dents on them, but not padded. So we get the greatly reduced explosive damage from dents, and that stacks with the padded mod from our chest piece. While we're also using the Black Ops Shin Guard, it's just like a sturdy combat armor piece with sprinters. Um, the bowler hat, which should be the sea captain's hat, but I needed to nerf my endurance by one. Uh, the destroyer's left leg. We're wearing the green shirt and combat boots for the endurance bonus it gives. And the overseer's right arm guard. This is something you can buy from Vault 81, the shop there. It's fairly expensive, I think around seven, 800 caps. Uh, if you have your charisma at 16, which you can do by wearing charisma clothes, uh, taking great mentats, uh, day tripper and beer um, and so and you also need to have some way of making money on this character I went with chemist and crafted a bunch of poison caltrops with steel and then used those to basically barter because they're worth a pretty decent amount and they're only five steel so you can make a lot of them um, so yeah that's the gear um, right now I don't have any effects active because I wanted to show you the other piece of the puzzle just the gear and the special stats and the perks uh, Will not do it. We will you will die to a mini nuke with just that the other piece of the puzzle are drug and food buffs But I just kind of wanted to show you uh, What it, what kind of a difference that those can make so we're gonna run up to boomer here and he wastes the first mini nuke. Let's see if he can hit us if we're right next to him. And yeah, we can see it's instant death. So we're not quite there yet. So, I have a quick save loaded here. And yes, this is on survival mode, even though I quick save or quick load. Um, because um, for permadeath, I like to enable saving because the game can crash, and it does crash, and it really sucks on a permadeath run to lose a bunch of progress from the game crashing. Um, so because there isn't any like save scumming allowed in permadeath, I do allow uh, quick saving and quick loading through mods, uh, just to, for the purpose of not losing progress. Because you also tend to sleep less on permadeath runs, since there's no point in sleeping for the purpose of saving, since if you die, you lose all your. You have to start all the way over from Vault 111 anyway. So, that's just kind of the explanation for that. Here we have Buff Tats, Medex, Fury, Psycho Buff active. They're all going to give us Endurance, HP, Fury gives us Damage Resist, Medex gives us Damage Resist, Buff Tats, we have Endurance and HP. So, we got a lot more HP both from just the straight up buff as well as the endurance and we've got 50 more damage resist and then um i also took yagwai ribs which gives us a little bit more damage resist and also pretty important is that it gives us um some hp regen so as soon as we get hit we'll be regening hp since i just took this as well as blood bug steak just for a little bit of extra hp and then i think i will also no nah, i won't because i'll have to do it every time i reload so, with all those active, we're going to go up here again, and we're going to try to get Boomer to hit us. Alright, he missed that time. And boom, less than half for each beat. And then cleaning these guys up. Yeah, is not going to be a problem now. They're just not going to be able to keep up with the health region I have going from the food I've taken, as well as stat packs. So let's try again. We saw that Boomer had two mini nukes in his inventory. Uh, the first one missed. So let's see if we can survive both mini nukes. Alright, so there's the first one. And we're just gonna take um and there's a second and he got close but we're still alive and uh, these guys are not going to be able to do enough damage to kill me. 
Like, I can just spam stim packs now. And they, yeah, they have no chance. So yeah, I mean, that's about as much damage as you're going to take from Boomer. Um, with the setup. And we're only level 26. This is survival difficulty. Um, I can kind of show you just to verify. Yeah, we're on survival. And not using power armor. We're just And we're not using ballistic weave because we haven't unlocked it yet. It's just, yeah. Dense, padded, uh, chems, adamantium skeleton, and super high endurance. And no danger for many nukes. I mean, we were kind of in danger the first time, or that, that last time with how low we got our health. But that's, in all my testing, that's about as low as I've ever had yet. Like, I've probably done this little route here. I don't know, 30 plus times. I did it uh, just over and over again before I actually did my permadeath run. Um, my melee permadeath run. Just to make absolutely sure that I would not die if I got assigned up post Simonja. And then, of course, on my actual run, I end up getting sent to Starlight Drive-In. So that one took off quite a bit. So in this case, yeah, we would heal up. Heal again. We want to make sure we get to above... Well above 50% HP. And then now... Yeah, now we're safe. That's his last mini nuke. We have regen going for our stim packs. You still do have to be a little bit smart about it. So right there I kind of hit behind that wall. So I have my health to regen. Because if I would have taken like another hit immediately after, yeah, I would have died. So there is, I mean, a little bit of of uh, kind of tactics here, depending on where his first mini nuke goes. But yeah, we're still surviving fairly easily. Uh, we can try to do maybe a few more runs here. But this is a big reason why I'm such a huge fan of endurance on survival mode. Like, just maxing out endurance. Um, I know a lot of people... Maybe not a lot, but I know there are people out there that do more like agility based, like stealth builds as kind of the end all be all, or like refer to it as like the most powerful build in the game. And I don't know, I I just disagree. I think nothing is nothing I have found is stronger um, as far as surviving than just maximum endurance. Um, it's a, a big reason why I've done it on all of my permadeath that run so far. Uh, make sure I got up to 10 endurance. Because that health, that extra health really does matter. Even on survival, where everything is doing, you know, uh, four times the normal damage. I would even say it's like, that makes it even more important on survival. Um, I know, I, I don't trust my ability to stay hidden like throughout the whole game I know at some point I'm gonna mess up if I'm playing a stealth character and get detected and at that point I am, I'm dead because um, normally it's the choice un until you get to like higher levels it's usually a choice between either stealth or endurance um, for staying alive um, you're not usually gonna take both and for me I would rather just be able to face tank mini nukes <laughs> and just kind of play either like run and gun or you know running around slicing people up without any regard for whether or not they're detecting me um it's just a play style i really enjoy and i think it's super strong um you're not gonna have like as high burst damage as you will from like sneak attacks in a stealth build but that like the tankiness is just insane <laughs> Um, as if you if you saw the last video I made of me like fighting ten mythic death claws, um, those are like level ninety five enemies. My character in that last video was level seventy two, and they were no problem, even ancient behemoths. 
Um, so yeah, high endurance, man. It's really good. If you haven't done like a high endurance, like either run and gun or like non vats melee build, I highly recommend it. It's, I don't know, it's a, a really fun way to play the game, especially if you haven't tried it before. So yeah, there it is. That's how to survive a mini nuke on survival as early as level 26 without ballistic weave. So hope you enjoyed that. Hope that was helpful. Um, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, we'll uh, talk to you again soon.